Hey guys, Triple B here! Today we're revisiting Zoroark V-Star, and it's bringing some serious firepower to the Pokémon TCG. Zoroark's got the attack Ticking Curse that lets you do 50 damage for each of your Pokémon in play that's got damage counters on it, meaning if you've got a full bench, you can get up to 300 damage. The attack does cost two colorless energy though, so the obvious option being able to use double turbo energy, one energy attachment, do the attack, it does reduce it down to 280, which still takes out Pokemon V-Star though if you've got that full bench, which is very helpful, but you want to be able to hit 300 plus to take out things like Mew V-Max, right? So just use basic fire energy instead. We've got ways to move it around as well with the new Armor Rouge card from Scarlet and Violet. You can move basic fire energy cards from your bench to your active Pokemon. So using something like Magma Basin, which gets a fire energy from the discard to one of our bench guys and damages it, which Rock Zoroark doing more damage and then being able to use it to move that energy to Zoroark and attach for turn. All of a sudden you're doing that full 300 damage, attach a choice belt 330. It's pretty solid. And that's not the only good thing about Zoroark. It's also got a very powerful ability, Phantom Star, which is going to let you discard your hand and just draw seven cards. So not only does it have crazy damage output, it's also got crazy consistency in an ability that's effectively Professor's Research but you're not even using your supporter for turn, which allows you to use other utility supporters like Boss's Orders to get some gust, or even Thornton if you'd like to switch out one of your basic Pokemon that you don't really want to have on your bench. Looking at you, Luminion, thanks for getting me that supporter, but uh, you're a Zoroark now. Cheers. <laughs> Zoroark isn't our only firepowered attacker in the deck though, and we've also got Radiant Heatran, which is going to get more gains with more pain. Its attack, Raging Blast, is going to do 70 damage for each damage counter that's on it. And by having stadiums like Gapejaw Bog, where you can bench it, it takes 20 damage. And then later in the game, we can bump that with Magma Basin. We mentioned it earlier with the Armor Rouge, and it's going to help set up the Heatran as well. So we get that Fire Energy, put it on the Heatran, takes another 20 damage. All of a sudden, it's doing 280 damage. You can be paying this attack cost, though, with that basic fire and attaching a double turbo energy for turn, which can just come out of nowhere and surprise your opponents, but it does reduce the damage to 260. We've got things to move damage around though, like damage pump, so you can be taking damage off one of your other guys, putting it onto the Heatran and scaling that damage up even more, but damage pump's gonna help you pump up those numbers even higher. Eh? Eh? See what I did there? Yeah, I'm punny. <laughs> And to make sure that we're able to get set up into our various attackers, though, we're also going to have some additional draw power in a Bibberol line. So Bibberol having the ability Industrious Incisors allows you to draw until you have five cards in your hand once per turn. Combining that with Zoroark's ability, Professor's Research, potentially 19 cards we're drawing in one turn? That's a little bit crazy. It's a third of your deck and just makes the deck hyper consistent. Our other tech Pokemon in the deck is a Diancie, which has a very helpful attack in Spike Draw. Gonna let you do 20 damage to the active and then draw two cards. Helpful little bit of chip damage. If we're up against Mew V Max, which we mentioned earlier before, having 310 bumps that down to 290. All of a sudden, we don't need the choice belt on the Zoroark to be able to get that one shot. Really helpful. And its ability is actually gonna prevent our Zoroarks from being gusted up from the bench since they can't gust up basic Pokemon while Diancie's in the active. They can use Escape Rope, it's only preventing gust from supporters, but it's still very helpful to use. The other thing this combos nicely with is a Zoroark V, which has the attack Void Return. It costs zero energy and it's going to do 30 damage. So effectively, we could start out this Zoroark, get a Diancie on the bench, hit our opponent for 30 damage, and bounce into the Diancie. Effectively, just giving them the Diancie on a platter to go, yeah, you can kill this, but you're only getting one prize. And then next turn, I'm going to evolve my Zoroark up and I'm going to draw a bunch of cards and I'm going to beat you up because you killed my Diancie. Don't kill my Diancie. Yeah. Watch yourself. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we've got one more Pokemon lurking in the shadows, Gengar. It likes to hide out of sight, just hanging around in the discard pile, and from there he can trigger its ability Netherworld Door. It's gonna go from the discard pile and right onto our bench, and takes three damage counters. Really nice since three damage counters, we use damage pump to move two of those onto two of our other guys. All of a sudden that's 150 damage for Zoroark to be dealing to our opponent. It's a nice little surprise. So by having Gengar, Magma Basin, Gapejaw Bog, and Damage Pumps, we've got a lot of ways to spread damage around to our bench and hit some pretty massive numbers. So I think you understand why I was saying Zorark's got some big firepower now, don't you? <laughs>
Some potential considerations for this deck though, some other Pokemon, Manaphy would be an interesting inclusion since it does give some bench protection to our guys. Once our things evolve though, Bidoof up into Bibberl, has 120 HP, Carcadet into Armourouge, 130, they're outside of range of Greninja so it's not that big of a threat, but the fact that Lost Box could theoretically be gusting up one of our fire Pokemon and if we have a Diancie sitting on the bench, they hit weakness onto the fire guy, taking the knockout, and they hit 90 into that Diancie, taking a knockout. They can take two prizes without having to go through the full HP of a Zoroark. It's something to be mindful of. The other consideration would be including Klefki. We could swap it out for the Diancie, or maybe just nudge it in instead of something else in the deck. It's really helpful up against the Genesect V in Muse and Confies in Lost Box, and can just kind of give us a little bit of extra time. But I haven't really found the need for it since Zoroark seems to set up pretty quickly. What do you think of Zoroark though? Does it have enough firepower to take on the meta? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you made it this far, you clearly like red things, so you might as well just give that subscribe button a little boop while you're down there too. But let's jump on ladder and see how we go with this tonight. Like I could check in VIP pass just a more consistent bench set. But put in VIP pass. It'd be we put in VIP pass oh, after an aroma, which honestly is fine. We've got Ultra Ball today, Revolution. It's a little bit, but downside of VIP pass is it doesn't drop cave jaw, which if we head towards that direction, we just go for magma basin for getting damage counters out of magma basin. Get rid of that. Theoretically, we get rid of Gordon. And I think we go for the... Going for another Gengar just... Next turn, we can evolve this. Theoretically, all our back from the skin damage pump 10 here 10 here we're at 150 favorable see what we get park and then we have support for turn still I'm gonna talk fry Oh. Oh, I guess we could have Gengar and pumped already. Never punish. Look at this. We would have done Gengar Pump and four damage guys. And AD, we could boss that up and viably knock it out. I think we still that play though. We're gonna try and take it out. Still have a lot of draw potential. Nice. Damage that, damage that. We pinch the Heatran. Sets itself up while setting that up. Now at 2.30, so we're knocking that out. Ditch one of these, ditch one of these. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to. Because it's got so much inbuilt consistency. Like the Zoroark's ability, busted. It's damage output, busted. <laughs> Theoretically, you could be running it with like V Guard energy. Just to put it outside of range of Giratina. V Guard energy, yeah, V Guard energy is minus 30. Then it puts us up to 300 HP with one damage counter. We're at 290. 
just outside range. Tina? Also, the other consideration with the deck now is like, does Diancy get cut or Buffy? I feel like we stick with Diancy though. Because like Diancy being able to protect the Zoroark, like just do a little bit of chip damage into something, bounce into Diancy, and it's like, it does me up. Fine. Granted, they can just use like escape rope, get around it. Am I going for fish? I go for the fish. I think we just need to get set up here. Armors can go. Grab the fish. Fish gets us in. Search this hand. Like Gengar comes out. Get the counters at least. He added Klefki and kept Giants. Ooh. Yeah, we do this. No, it's cool. Kind of the thinking. And then do I just attach energy here? Like, am I going to use Spike Drop? Probably not. Probably two cards, though, can be helpful. This definitely goes down. But I just think that's gonna get killed by Kramer. I'm gonna ignore it. I'm not going for the spike bro. We've got four. Get us over. Next turn, Doof becomes Bibs. Ultra Ball. Get a Zoroark. Ultra Ball let away. Get a Zoroark Star. Thornton the Luminian into the Zoro. You evolve it up into the Star. Get going. Then we don't have a low H bench that's light and weak. When I come. Also, that's pretty helpful. So if they don't kill the Diancy, we have a retreat. They likely will. They've got four things in the wall zone, they just need to get into a cram rant. They've gone through half their deck. How is there not a crime right now? What's going on? There we go. That's the dude. That's what's leaning towards giving them the dark event. I give them the blue mini and they do 110 into it. Uh, 
right? It's at 120. The Zoroark will have another 150. It can still eat hits. Draw support for the turn. <laughs> Actually, we've got the Bibberal. Nice. Okay. That's at a Greninja range. It does suck losing. But I think it's gotta be done. Basic. That can go. I've just got to be mindful of the damage counters. Like, if I put a damage counter on Bibberal in range of Bram, currently they need to do full Sableye pings on it to kill it. Gengar's in range of Bram. Currently, though, for the Gengar, they would have to boss up the arm, hit it, hit the Diancy, or they've got to try and take down these Zoroark for two prizes. So we're in an all right spot. Wonder, do we put a Delph box in this? It's like the Delph box, you've got a loss on two energy, but we're running DTE, so we just attach DTE, loss on the D up against loss box, maybe we can take out two simultaneously, or a Conti Stable Eye. Definitely worth messing around with. We do that, we're hitting 250 just in case they do bench like Dragonite. See if we can get into a boss. Ace. pretty well <laughs> uh but yeah delphox is definitely a consideration it's like having the armor is to be able to just move energy up we've also got the thornton so if it's one of those situations where it's like oh i need to take two prizes oh i'm up in the box. how do i do it and diancy into delphox armors all the energy onto it attached to also on that all right they got the crab i think are they coming up to attack with the crab? Okay. Seems risky. 
I feel like that's one of the... Oh, now it doesn't seem so risky. Okay, so that comes up. They take three prizes off of this. They need to kill the other V-Star and single prizer. Whereas we need to take that out and single prizer for that Delph block. That makes worth food. Not sure what I would cut, but it's definitely... I feel like the crab is solid. Fusion. Because, like, you Greninja, you hit some things. Crab can up later, or Sableye sets stuff up. Like, he just did 790, 690. That's a good number. <laughs> Alright, but we're hitting uncapped damage, or unre damage. We bring back that Gengar, though. It's in. So I need to hit a basic off of this. Alright game, I said I need to hit a basic. <laughs> Try that again. Come on, Tails. There we go. Like, do I go for the Heatran? This is Greninja. That's not. Big numbers. Zoro V, we've already lost the star. We don't have Pokemon recovery. I think it is. Because theoretically, it's another attacker. Yeah, two for one. Why not? Let the boss back in? Boss Thornton? If we can reuse that Thornton and get this Diancy off our bench. Very keen. Huh? So we'll just go for the Reaper. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, if they don't get a Greninja playoff, like, yeah, yeah, we're fine here. The Sableye does what? Takes out a Diancie? I feel like they're gonna try and go Flora, get back Greninja, or theoretically, get back the Crab. Crab comes up, takes out the Zoroark, but they've gotta take out three prizes. So it would be Sableye puts the counters on Diancie on the Zoroark. Grab back. They're stable. Eye. Okay. Not sure what they're anticipating. Taking out for three prizes. Bids and Diane, so you'd be the lowest, and that's. 200. They're putting out 100. Yeah, there's no way for them to get three prizes off that. They've got to be able to take out this little park in some way. Door work in some way or get Greninja. Get Greninja, get one of my fire types in that too. Do I just dance you here? I could give him that. That at least has the meat backing. B sharp, how's it going? <laughs> Very odd emote. Very odd. Big polosaur.
Are you subscribed? If you're subscribed, then yeah, there would not be a. That's the thing I've got set up so when the ad pops up. Like, it lets me know that they're going on. gonna use that <laughs> all right well we can right hand to this right we right hand to it don't know how else they're gonna try and like it's yeah i guess with this sitting in the active it's greninja hits this hits that we right hand theoretically is there a way for us to currently outside of it I think just trying to think. Because, yeah, it would be thorning that off the bench would play. Do that, we start. If they've got it, they We have to hard retreat into the Zoro and then hope that they don't just gust all this back up. Or not gust. Okay. If they get the grenade. Yeah, taking out that armor is very smart. Plus putting the heat channel also on like this plan. Was aware that they need to get a water in the active. Yeah. They gifted them that. This lurk can be sharp. That was good, man. I'm probably only going another like 20 minutes. Oh, is that what he was trying to do? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Cheers, man. Love to hear that you not keen on supporting. set up like it should be doing this thing okay they clara they get into the greninja attach for turn hard retreat bit if they've got the mirage gate and that game, that's just game right he train gets knocked out by weak defense gets knocked out off the bench i love how it just doesn't show me what they go oh ptcgl Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I guess they don't have the water energy. Or they didn't grab the Greninja. Not sure what, what that sequencing was all about. I'm guessing they just didn't have the water in deck to be able to accelerate out to the Greninja, or maybe they didn't. Not 100%, but yeah. Interesting. I think. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hitting that thumbs up button's a great way to let me know. And if you subscribe, you'll know when more shenanigans like this is coming out. If you're after some more gameplay, there should be a video popping up here. They'll link to my other channel where we're going to show more games with this. And if you're after some more decks, there should be a video popping up around here. Till next time, though, take care of yourself.